Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I. This is the final episode, episode number 10, in our Ludendorff campaign uh, series, where we're playing one of two operational scenarios included in Strategic Command World War I. Uh, the other scenarios in the game are all sort of grand strategy that look at all of Europe, but this is one of two scenarios that looks at Europe uh, just on the Western Front, uh, and this scenario looks at the Western Front in 1918, specifically dur during the German Spring Offensives and then the Allied Counteroffensives uh, toward the end of the war. This is going to be the final episode. In the last episode, the enemy armies really started to melt away, and at this point, we just have to ensure that we don't make any mistakes. That sort of prevents our success at uh, Paris and along the rest of the line. We've formed a couple of different pockets. We're reducing the enemy in multiple places, and uh, you could call this mopping up operations, but I like to call it uh, skimming the cream off of the victory. So we'll see how things play out in this episode. Hope you guys enjoy the series and the episode. Leave your thoughts below, and, then, and I'll catch you guys at the end. Another British division here is destroyed in the open. Troy's looks juicy, but it, it doesn't actually seem to be. Right, let's swap these troops around. Another enemy division here is destroyed. So they're going to have troops left. Perhaps even troops that can do damage. But they're not going to have them in depth to do anything, I don't think. I think this was a very devastating turn for the Allies. The, Fr the British are now down to 35 units, the French down to 50. The Americans are at four. Put their ground cover. Give me the one to six. I know they've got artillery support, but we're going to go for this French division here. Drive them back. The only position where they're really strong is on the Belgian front. That's the one place they still have considerable strength. Can we knock some of these artillery units out? Such a... Yeah. Got one. Okay. I really lack the artillery to dislodge these troops here. Be great to break out in the north, but it's not critical, I don't think, actually. Okay. All right, so we still have to do the attack near Paris this turn. These guys are dug in seven and six. It's too bad I don't have these guys in range yet with their 10 shells, but let's go ahead and hit Paris directly. We're going to turn this damn city into absolute rubble. But it can't be helped, lads. Unfortunately, it can't be helped. The city of Paris must be flattened. If they continue to resist, they must be flattened. The recon bombers fly over. They'll get hit by enemy fighters, but they've got escorts. All right. Well, 
attack one to three here. Then I'm going to swing the armor down. I don't know if armor gets a big benefit attacking the city or not. Appears to. All right, so Paris is ours. So now we're going to bombard the 55th Division in the northern section of the city. I don't know. I hadn't noticed a big difference in terms of uh, bombarding or reconning before you bombard with artillery. I would think you would get a, a bonus, but I haven't honestly... No whenever I do it, it doesn't seem like it's a... A huge deal. I'm going to keep bombarding to try and get their morale lower. All right. This armor, can I get down here? I can. So we'll open the attack with the 12th Division. Bring the armor down here. Got it. All right, we'll swing these troops into Paris. I don't even know what they're going to counterattack with. They don't have much. All right, let's hit these troops, this 49th British division here on the flank. Heavy bombers hit this cavalry. Let's see what that did to their morale. Did it hurt it much? Not that much. But we'll attack anyway, just to reduce any... Potential counterattacks, effectiveness. All right, that British division's destroyed. Got that enemy headquarters unit. I kind of just left <laughs> this open. I guess we'll have to operate some troops over there just just in case. Just to make sure they don't have a an open road. All right. So Paris is mostly ours. There's, I think, one more national morale objective here. One more hex of Paris still under enemy control. I can't swap my artillery out, so I, I, I'm not positioned to continue the attack there. Oh, yeah, this HQ. So more enemy units are surrounded. Paris has lost two hexes this turn, plus another fortress elsewhere. French are below 50 units. The British below 46 or below 35, sorry. And we're even attacking north out of the salient of the north. All right. Let's see what happens next turn, boys. Yeah. French morale falls due to the loss of tool. German morale is boosted due to the capture of Arras. French fortress bombards are near Epnol. Wow, they didn't lose morale for losing part another part of Paris? At least they didn't get like a notice, notice of it. Feels like, like, a, like a GG moment. I'm just surprised they're still fighting at this point, to be honest, with the complete liquidation of the southern front. Like, they, they gotta know that game over. Game over, man. Game over.
Paris Commune of 1870, anyone? I guess. I think the difference is that was Neuhauser after a sudden and dramatic defeat at the very beginning of the war, where it probably felt like they hadn't been bested. Whereas this is at the end of a long, brutal, bloody war that everyone is just exhausted from. You know, I haven't. I don't think I fired the railgun last turn. Uh, it wasn't in range for one or two of the recent turns, but yeah, I don't. I didn't fire it last turn anyway. All right, those divisions are cut off. Attrition losses for those three divisions. Actually, the fourth division there cut off. All right. Two reserve divisions are ready. Where are we at now? 48 and 36. Well, the railgun's not in range of anyone. I think Paris is going to survive another turn because I don't think I can... But what I will do is I'll surround it. All right, so I like how there's three enemy artillery batteries here, but it's like, are you really going to draw? You're going to liberate Paris with uh, with artillery alone? All right, so let's surround these guys. We will move our armor as well. We'll get our artillery into position. A couple of our units will reinforce. Move the railgun closer. I'm not sure if they've got any reserves coming in from the south, so we'll move this division, the 34th, here to cover the southern approaches. Looks like they do have one division. God, these guys are completely out of supply. They're going to give up real fast. And just like that, Three more enemy divisions died. I was going to try and rest my aerial bombers, but I do want to finish this division off. So I'll recon him for the win. We'll surround these two enemy divisions also. Du, du, du. Another pocket is formed. All right, so French morale has to get down to 1% or actually, what are the victory conditions again? So victory conditions are French national morale falls below 1% or the Germans capture all four hexes of Paris. So the game's going to end next turn unless something dramatic happens. Which I suppose dramatic is possible. We formed another massive pocket. Hell yeah, brothers. We got him encircled. And at least some of our lines can be entrenched.
We're going to attack here. Mainly just to prevent the enemy from... Let's also go after this cavalry, because it is the furthest, or the closest, I guess, to being able to break out. So we'll destroy them. That thickens the cordon around the uh, enemy. We'll shift some troops south here. All right, so we've now got six divisions surrounded down here. All right, they, they are kind of threatening over here. We've got new divisions. I'm going to deploy them immediately inside the uh, pocket here. No, Jed, I'm not going to just... I'm not going to leave one objective hex just so we can keep pounding them. That might sound appealing, but honestly, that's just kind of... I don't know. It's a little gamey. I don't I don't typically play quite quite as brazenly as that. All right, let's I do want to take ye, I don't even know how you pronounce that name. Whoa! We just rolled that unit. That was easy. Oh god. I should have should have flown some aircraft up there. We might lose that right away next turn. In any event, we destroyed the enemy unit. Reeps or yeeps? I don't know how you pronounce that. But a famous battlefield with lots and lots of death. Alright, bomb these... Uh, are these more Portuguese troops? I feel bad for the Portuguese troops. How many divisions did they deploy to the war, I want to say, by the way, though? They do seem to be a pretty considerable force in this game. Like, in terms of number of men. Some trench. Ye pray? I don't, that doesn't sound right. Okay, so the enemy's surrounded and at both Paris and a massive pocket in the north where the British are surrounded. Yepers, Yepers, Yepers. Okay. All right, so we've got a huge portion of the enemy army there in the center is just, is, is surrounded. Can we take, well, we already took tool. Taking Epnol would be nice. Let's, let's get these surrounded troops first. We could advance on Belford in the south also. I'm not going to be quite that bold. All right, let's go for this American division. Their morale must be in the toilet. They're just melting away. Oh, there's another another line, an American tanks. But for whatever reason, the lead unit and that line is artillery. They must have still been withdrawing and hadn't been able, able to get quite away yet. 
You think the French will sign surrender papers soon? Probably. The British too, frankly. Advance, boys. Honestly, like, part of me is just kind of, what's the point in even moving some of these units? Here's a question. Why does the game insist on giving you the uh, over-the-top whistle when there's no trenches? I know it's just a generic sound effect, but it feels like there shouldn't be... Shouldn't be that sound effect in those circumstances. All right. So the enemy does appear to be forming a new defensive line well south of a lot of these objectives. Let's just rail some of these troops away. All right. Let's end this turn, and I'm pretty convinced the next turn is going to be our last one. Belgian morale falls, British morale falls, German morale is boosted. Sunbane Prime, thanks for the follow. Bubba, thanks for the follow. Existentialism123, thank you for the follow. In the very historical film, Enemy at the Gates, they used a whistle before the suicidal counterattack. Well, if it's in Enemy at the Gates... No, I know, Neuhauser. Um, actually, I've been listening to the Sharp series on Audible lately, which is um, actually really entertaining. And uh, that's how, apparently, the uh, I mean, normally these novels don't make this stuff up. That's how the uh, British gave a lot of advance orders or halt or open fire or other things like that is they used whistles uh, in the Napoleonic period to, to issue certain types of orders. Uh, I'm in Sharp's Prey at the moment, which is uh, the Copenhagen, the Battle of Copenhagen. And uh, they're, they're, they used whistles with uh, giving orders to the 95th Rifles at Kona, the Battle of Kona, I believe it is. Yeah, then you know, I I watched a couple of clips on YouTube, Erican, from the the movies, and one of the things I I definitely agree with a lot of the commenters. It's like they didn't have a budget to have enough extras, so it's like Sharp's a major and he's commanding like ten dudes, <laughs> um, and it's kind of it's kind of amusing. Like it, they're good, I can tell from the clips. It's very entertaining. But um, one of the things you don't have to worry about in the books is is a budget to give the right uh, the right sense of scale. We did lose a division there, which is kind of funny, Erkin, because like Sean Bean wasn't a nobody when some of these were filmed. I mean, he played a huge role in uh, one of the Harrison Ford Jack Ryan films in the eighty. I think it was the eighties. Maybe it was like ninety one, ninety two. But like these were late '90s films. When was uh when was Goldeneye? Was he he was in that? But like was that before or after the Sharp films? Anyway, let's take the net last hex in Paris first. That'll give us the win. But we'll uh, we'll wait to end the turn until we finish that pocket off in the north. Yep, Patriot Games.
Many battles were decided, and you're talking about the Sharp miniseries. Many battles were decided by a dozen burly Irishmen with an electric guitar playing in the background. Well, there you go, lads. Paris is ours. Railgun on Versailles, though, because fuck that place. Versailles is ours as well. I didn't even use my tanks there. We'll roll the tanks forward here and have them knock out artillery. But super average, the sharp the sharp movies, like the miniseries, continued into like the late nineties. I think they filmed I think they even filmed one in like two thousand eight when they went back and made um made some of the prequel books that he wrote later dealing with Sharp's time in India. I think they, they did those in like 2007, 2008. By that time, Sean Bean was certainly like that would have been post Lord of the Rings even. So, you know, he obviously enjoyed the role cause he kept playing it. Well, after Did the budget get any better in the later ones, like after it had been obviously popular and going for a while? All right, let's finish off these guys. There's an open hex in Paris. Open as in I don't have troops there? Yeah, I knew that. No, it didn't. J Street. All right. Actually, one of my uh, one of my best friends, my roommate in college, um, was... Uh, this was back when you could like rent. Well, I guess you probably still can, but they had, um, we just, we long story short, we went to like a, a library near our college and got every single one of the sharps movies at the library library. And he watched them all. I did not, I was not there for that, but okay. So Paris is ours. Huzzah for that boys. Bully. Hell yeah. Destroyed a bunch of those enemy units. Let's just finish. I don't think I'm going to like do everything on this map, but I'm going to let's go ahead and finish off some of these pockets. Yeah, I know it's on YouTube, but. I think even like the full Sharps Rifles movies on YouTube, not just clips. Okay, so those two divisions that were surrounded are finished off. Uh, don't really want to attack any of these guys. The American Armored Formations. Hey, I've destroyed the first division like 12 times. <laughs> Instead of the big red one, these guys are going to be the bloody red one. Got him again. Eat shit, big red one. Can these guys reach? They can. Okay, crush their morale with air attack. Then attack. Lee Marvin is displeased with me now. <laughs> Got it. Epneal fell. Another enemy national morale center falls. <laughs> I mean, we'd be making another pocket down here in the south, too, if that was something we were worried about. All right, let's go for that northern pocket then. Maybe we can finish it all off. Well, how's their, all of their supply is abysmal. But they still want to fight, huh? All right. Well, here's what we'll do. I can reach two of the units with artillery with a full set of 10 shells so we can get two of the guys' or entrenchments completely gone. 
We'll try and hit the others with bombers to see if that hurts the morale enough. I think I used the recon aircraft in that area already. Maybe one of them's left. No, they're both used. But we can use our bombers here on the flanks. The boys and Roy. Hurt their morale a bit. So the morale's down to 40. Go for these guys first. All right, so we got the first unit there. Got the second unit there. It wasn't war. It was murder. Third division. Fourth division. We're going to get all but one, probably. Or two, maybe, I guess. Would Two guys can move still, but we'll bring these down to finish off that division. Yeah, I think all of these other guys attacked. I can't reach down there with anybody else. So we almost finished off the pocket. I guess I can actually do that. Got it. We got the whole enemy pocket, boys. Six enemy divisions. Some trench. All right. So, any more national morale centers we can take? I don't think so. Go for this French division near Bethune. Got him. Although those divisions are pretty battered. They do still have a lot of divisions like garrisoning different random towns. I want to go for Ara, but I, I, I know there's got to be someone there. There is, but they're aircraft. Ha ha. Or not Ara. That's not Ara. Oh, come on. Don't give me an enemy contact with that. Get off. Bullshit. Enemy contact. The enemy is going to attack you with their... Uh... They're recon bombers. Mm-hmm. Sure they are. All right. Well, that's it, folks. That's the end. So let's take a look. The enemy is down to 36 French units, 29 British. In terms of losses, 121 French units, 71 British. 26 American, and remember, probably five or so units in each of these French and British were also American losses. The Italians lost four, the Belgians six, the Germans 22. So 22 to, good God, 32, 36, 157, 228. That's a hell of a kill to death ratio there. Hell yeah. All right, let's end it. I'm done. Done with it. I didn't even bother deploying my reinforcements. The enemy technically made counterattack. French morale falls due to the loss of Epnel. 
Austria-Hungary launch, launches an offensive over the Piave. I thought Austria-Hungary would have collapsed by now, but okay. I guess maybe all the uh, all the Allied troops uh, pulled back. German decisive war-winning victory. There you go, boys. It's all over. The enemy is vanquished. The Americans have had a little concentration down here under Pershing near Vital. I mean, we could have stack wiped the entire map if we kept it up. They didn't have much left. And a huge amount of their units, like, is just artillery or specialist units or headquarters units. They had very few ground units. They had, what, three divisions in the Paris area and one cavalry division. And then they had, like, ten other units that weren't <laughs> that weren't really going to do anything versus my troops. Um, yeah, we could have taken this whole map easy. The only place they really had any concentrated strength left, especially after we wiped these six divisions. I thought maybe there were more troops behind this, but just a, a thin four division front here, we easily would have flanked them. The only place they really had strength left was here in Belgium, where there's still a reasonable defensive line. It would have taken me a while to get there. They probably could have evacuated by, by sea. England, for whatever reason, kept five divisions, four divisions, a detachment and artillery back in 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 Great Britain um yeah i don't know why yeah belgium said fuck it we're covering our own ass that being said belgium was already already strongly in our control the map goes way further east too by the way because it does in the uh it does assume maybe you could you could if you're the allies you begin your counterattack but yeah that's the end of it boys that's the end of the ludendorff offensive you can see here on the strategic map how far we got. At the end of the day, the Ludendorff offensive in our game went far better than it did historically. If we take a look at the detailed losses here, we can see the British lost 57 divisions, four detachments, one HQ, five cavalry divisions, three artillery units, and one tank corps. The French lost 93 divisions, 12 detachments, one HQ, six cavalry divisions, and nine artillery. The Italians lost an HQ, a detachment, and two divisions. The Americans, two detachments, 18 divisions, one marine unit, a marine brigade, five artillery units. The Belgians lost four divisions and two cavalry divisions. And the Germans lost one detachment, 20 divisions, and one artillery unit. It was a pretty decisive victory there. I enjoyed that. I really like the operational scenarios in this game, maybe even more than the grand strategy, like these games are known for grand strategy, but like this operational mode was actually quite a, quite a bit of fun. I wish they had more options to choose from rather than just the two, uh, the two scenarios. They've got a 1914 one as well. But with that being said, guys, hope you did enjoy the stream. Thanks to all the new followers and the continued supporters and the subscribers and all of that. Hope you guys enjoyed until next time. This is the historical gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time. I'm out.